everyone. Welcome to the Thanksgiving edition of The Pitch with Fox, b and Mitch. I'm your host, John Fox, alongside here with b and Mitch Sabatelli. Top on? stories of the week. Victor Martinez packing up his bags for Detroit. Is this terrible for the Red Sox or what? Yo, this, com- this completely sucks for all of Red Sox Nation. Um, I'm going to have to say is yesterday is, could be one of the darkest days since, since the Epstein got here, you know. Um... Victor Martinez was great here. He was great in the clubhouse ever since we got him in that trade deadline. And actually, this is back-to-back years where we let big, big name trade, trade deadline acquisitions go. Jason Bay two years ago, now Victor Martinez. Victor Martinez absolutely raked since he got here. He, nobody's hit more home runs um, against the Yankees than Victor Martinez. He's hit eight home runs against the Yankees. That's more than double anybody else on the Red Sox. And, and really, Theo Epstein, I'm going to say something right now. I'm going to say all Theo Epstein, John Henry, Tom Warner, Tom Warner and Larry Lucchino, are completely overrated. And Brian, I have a question for you. I want to say something. Since Theo, since Theo's gotten the job, how many free agents, how many multi-year free agent signings has Theo have seen made? Can you think of uh, any? I'll probably, I don't know. Absolutely none. I, I'm going to have to say that he's made absolutely none. Adrian Beltre was a one-year thing. Since 2004, after the, the Ortiz thing got lucky, but since, the 2000, since 2004 and up, He's absolutely made no good free agent signings. And the Hanley Ramirez deal was not him either. That was when he had the, the hiatus and Penn Jer- Char- Charrington and Jed Hoyer took over for a while and made that tr- deal and pulled the trigger and actually won them a World Series from that deal. He's actually made no deals. And, you know, Victor Martinez, letting him go just absolutely blows, you know. And now, now they're going to have to sign Adrian Beltre. And Adrian Beltre just got a huge offer from the A's and didn't take it. That's bigger than Victor Martinez's. Now they're yeah. going to have to sign him. That's they're not, they're, this sucks right now, and I don't want to say it, but it could be a bridge here coming up. Yeah, I mean, they should have done everything in their power to get him back. Absolutely. Because not only does he catch, but he plays first base, too. That's, he's that's great very in, versatile. He's great in the clubhouse. And on top of that, can you really trust Salto Lamacchia? No. I mean, he was supposed to be this big thing, and he's done nothing. Listen, the Red Sox ownership, the Red Sox ownership went over there, and since, since the offseason started, they went over and bought a European soccer team that nobody can give... Nobody cares about really. I mean, why did you do that? Now, it, how how do you think fans, Red Sox fans, are going to be? They're going to be absolutely pissed if they see Ryan Kalish in left field, Jed Lowry at third, and Jared Salto Macchia behind the plate after they just bought this team. They're just. I don't think that that's not going to help revenue. These, they, I don't think these guys are committed for winning. And really, through Epstein, I think he's, he would be a better GM for a smaller market club. You know, I think he's not built for these. I think we, we need a guy like Brian Cashman, somebody who can go out there and make a deal. Who will actually spend the money. Exactly. I mean, the Red Sox have the money to spend, they just don't. They just don't. It, you know, a, a couple more million dollars, they could have had Mark Teixeira. A couple more million dollars, they could have had Victor Martinez. Yeah. And I made a prediction last episode, last episode, made the episode before, I said it was going to be with the Tigers. I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep expanding that because I was going to piss me off, but it ended up being what he did go to the Tigers, and this is really pissing me off. And, you know, Theo Epstein, he's got to step up, especially, and if, if, what is he going to He's gonna sign to Jason Warth, and they're gonna have those stupid promos with him holding up his stupid jersey with his with his number and pretending like he's the next Manny Ramirez. Jason Warth, for all Red Sox fans who don't know too much about him, he's gonna suck. And uh, Adrian Beltre, if you got him, even if you do get Adrian Beltre and Jason Warth, that's gonna be worse than last year's lineup. And everyone thought that lineup. And, and gonna I mean, suck. how can you even be sure that Adrian Beltre is really gonna be the same player? You're not. No, he, he's, you're not. He's never it, really it been it, like that. It could have been a fluke year. Yeah. Who knows? So I mean. They're, they're in a his, lot of trouble. History says whenever Adrian Beltre is in a contract year, that's when he has his two big years. You know, he had that great year in the Dodgers, then he decided to suck, and it's a big year with the Red Sox. And I think this is going to be like a Mike Lowell thing. I think if you, what you're going to see if they're trying to get, they're going to let Adrian Beltre walk. They're going to get Jason, Jason Worth, pretend like he's the next greatest thing, and he's going to be a J.D. Drew too. What they need to do, the one thing that can save the UFC scene right now is if he goes out there and makes a Carl Crawford deal. Carl Crawford do so much for the Red Sox. And um, if you get Carl Crawford, that's going to be dynamic. But um, what about Prince Fielder? Prince Fielder, you, no. Also, if you go, but I'm saying it's a sign. If you can go out and, get, and trade for an Adrian Zelts, I'd do that in, in a heartbeat. You know, Prince Fielder, Ryan Braun. I, I think I think Prince Fielder is a little more on the market than Gonzalez is right now, though. Possibly, but uh, Prince Fielder and Adrian Gonzalez are both free agents. If they're going to make a statement, especially Tom Warner's already made a statement, we're going to go out there and be active this offseason and sign a big guy. So far, you let. Victor Martinez, your best hitter, arguably, last season, and Adrian Beltre, who's ninth in the MVP voting, both basically go right now, and then you're going to come back and, and not sign him. But if Jason Worth is not a big signing. I want to see them get Carl Crawford, maybe make an Adrian Gonzalez or Prince Fielder trade. You know what I'm saying? Go out there and do something. This is ridiculous right now. Well, I'll, I'll leave the Red Sox fans. Yeah, I'm sorry for that, but you know, just trying to get the... He has some strong feelings yeah. there, so I'll leave it at that. All right, guys. Now, how will... 
signing Vmart helped the Tigers. Well, how will it hurt? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. He, I mean, but, he, he's probably the top three catcher in the, in the game. So clearly it's going to help. Catcher's a hard position to fill. Exactly. And he's got great power, great contact. I mean, he's just an all-around player. He can play, you know, two positions. I'm sure he could play third base if he had to. So, I mean, he can do a lot. Yeah, I agree with you say. I guess um, somebody's saying that they might play Alex Sevilla as one of their um, major catchers back there and actually put Victor Martinez in that first base, but there's a problem there because this is Miguel Cabrera. But then you have Victor Martinez as your DH for th for four years, which is perfect. Or why not Cabrera DH? Yeah, it's or, perfect. Or they can switch off every game. Yeah, it, it's I mean. it's great. You know, they everyone knew Detroit was going to spend the money. They had a lot of money coming off the books with Manglio Rajonias, and they went out there and actually are doing something and trying to make their team a better club. You know, they have the pitching. They have Verlander. They have they have a solid closer in Jose Valverde. You need they, they need some more hitting to go around with Miguel Cabrera, who came in second in the MVP voting. He needs some uh, he needs some other pop in there. And Victor Martinez is a perfect bat. I really love that sign. I'm going to say this: I think the Tigers are taking the Central. They could, you know. I think, I think they will. I, I think this puts them in position for a while now. Uh, yeah. giving them a solid guy. Guys are going to want to come here. You know, Tigers have had a, pro a couple problems at this side of the decade. They step they stepped it up. They made it to the World Series, and rather than giving it all up like something like the Marlins do, they're going out there and still making moves, which I love because. You know, Tigers are d doing stuff right now. And um, signing Victor Martinez, like they promised their fans that they were going to do something, I think that's going to really help this team. All right, now next next top story. Brad Childress is fired, <laughs> no longer the coach of the Vikings, and Leslie Frazier uh, named the coach. Now, should, do you think they should have stuck with uh, Childress? Yeah. No, uh, uh, it's about freaking time that this guy's gone. I mean, he's, I, I know he's, people have said he's had pretty good years in the past, and I know people are putting this all on Brett Favre. Yeah, Brett Favre's been a... Complete D bag this whole year and he su he sucked. But look, the Childress, you know, you have a all you have a Pro Bowl team right there with one of the best lines, one of the best defense, one of the best offenses. You get Randy Moss in here and all you do is Randy Moss completely goes down the tubes even worse than when he was on the Patriots. This guy should have been fired at the beginning of the season, at least a couple weeks in, once they knew that they were starting to not do too good. This is way too late. Um, I think maybe they should have maybe kept Childress actually for the whole rest of the year to kind of make it so the ownership looks a little bit better. Maybe they were trusting him. And afterwards, just let him go. This is kind of a dumb move for them, for the Vikings ownership, but who knows? We'll see what happens. I, I think Childress is a good coach, but he'd be a better coach on a team like Tampa Bay, yeah. who doesn't have all these, you know, he can't manage the egos on the teams. Yeah. And, I mean, he clearly couldn't manage Brett Favre. Brett Favre controlled that team. No, I think Brett... What? Yeah, what were you saying? No, what were you going to say about Favre? No, I think Brett, Brett Childress, the only problem is... He does. He looks like one of those Wade Phillips types who don't get on the players. You know, I think he needs to be a little bit more active in his players. You know, he has a lot of veterans in the team. That's that's probably a, a little bit of a uh, problem right there. You know, it's tough to deal with those large, big heads like um, Brett Favre and everything. So I think you know he did a pretty solid job bringing Brett Favre in. I, I think the season. thing that hurt them the most was him pretty much begging Favre to come back. Yeah. Because nobody really wanted yeah. him there. So I, I mean. I think who, who knows better. if they're really this bad? Yeah. It could be that the players are just, you know, saying, we don't like you, we don't want you anymore. I think what they should have done is maybe keep Tavares Hill just a couple more weeks, bench far, bring Tavares Jackson as your starter, see how Tavares Jackson does under Childress' system, and see how Childress is really, because he really was a good coach until this year, and it's really broken down since the start well, of I mean, this he's, year. he's like 38 and 35. But, yeah. But at the same time, who did he really have until Adrian Peterson came along? Yeah. So, but I mean... I don't, I don't I don't know. I mean I think I think this is more Brett Favre. It's tough than you know, it's too much media for the Vikings actually I, not to sign him to, to to um release him, but you know, um I don't know, that's a tough situation with the Vikings going right this, now. I think this is like a Dallas situation. I mean oh, I, yeah. I think you're gonna see them start winning games now. Brett because, Chil because yeah. Chill just isn't gonna be there, so the players are gonna the be. The only problem is Brad Garrett's very, very good. Uh Leslie Frazier, I haven't heard too much about this guy. I knew Jason Garrett had a good um, offense. He was a great offensive coordinator for Dallas. He had a bit of a reputation. We'll see how Leslie Frazier works out. And maybe if you can work. I, I, I think what the Vikings should do is, like I said, just bench Favre. Tavares Jackson's your future quarterback. Let him play a little bit. Let Favre go. I mean, the guy's breaking down. Yeah. He, I think this might be actually his last year. It just, I don't it just looks like next. the players weren't trying, trying as hard. hard. You know, Sidney Rice is back this week. Bring Tavares Jackson in. See how he works with them. Yeah. I'm not. All right, moving on to our final uh, top story. MVPs are announced in the AL. Uh, obviously, Josh Hamilton, and in the NL, Joey Votto. Thoughts on this, guys? Can't really disagree with either one nope. of those players. I mean, Votto for a while there, we thought he might win the Triple Crown. So yeah. 
he, he had a dominating season. And Josh Hamilton, to come back from everything that he's been through, I mean, this is really remarkable. And he definitely deserved it. Yeah. I think what Josh Hamilton did, everybody knows the story with all of um, his alcohol abuse. Coming back, and it, you know, he got down the year last year. Coming back, really putting everything on the field, really showing people what he got. He really carried this team, um, th what, 359 in the four hole, th four, three and four hole. He was, he was an insane hitter right now. And Joey Votto in the NL, bringing that team with absolutely nobody around him. You know, Hamilton's got people around him. Votto was just a tremendous player. You know, he was... I mean, he pretty much carried that he, team to the playoffs. He was snubbed for getting into the All-Star game. He eventually did get into the All-Star game. But he really carried that team. And, and to go against Pools, I think that shows a lot of respect to him. And people were finally giving Votto his respect. He was very underrated. I think he's actually showing respect. And I think... We did. We called this Votto and Hamilton. I think yeah. we. You mentioned Cargo, who was very good too, and I mentioned Cabrera too, and they both were. Um, I think Cargo was third, and yeah. Cabrera was second. So we both had pretty good prediction that, predictions there, and I think they were both well deserving. You know, they both carried both teams. I can't argue. All right, you guys came up clutch right there. So uh, we're gonna move on now. But before we, before we move on, we're gonna have to take a short break. Our fir uh, first short break. Coming up next, we have NFL and a lot more stuff, so stay tuned, everyone.